Hope you're having a good day today. I've been getting a lot of questions about how to show evidence of research and also how to push your models with a lot of detail. So I'm going to do a brief demo on the process that you guys should be doing when you're modeling your project models, so your prop models. So what? Um, a great question I had today in office hours was about a Canon and somebody asked me about 3D Canon. So let's go ahead and I'm going to look up if I can spell it Canon. There we go. Maybe even a field cannon. It's kind of what we're looking for. And you can see I have tons of reference right off the bat. Now looking at this reference is very important. Um, but when we really look at this, it can become very overwhelming on how to model a shape such as this. Remember, everything in here is modeled after primitive shapes. But if you really look at it, it doesn't look like they just stuck a circle to a cylinder and called it a day. So this shows, this model at least, shows evidence of research. You can see the way the chains hang, they research that. The way the wheels have the spokes and they taper slightly, they research that. There's a lot of modeling detail, but you can see even in this view right here, there's not a lot of faces to achieve that. So it's actually a little less work than maybe you were thinking. So how do we start a project? I've been seeing in Maya a lot of people kind of look at a cannon in this case, and then they just say, okay, I'm gonna model a cannon, so no, that, that's a cannon right there, done. Well, that's not, that's our visual memory. That's not really how a cannon would look. A real cannon, if we look at even the render of it, kind of looks like this. So there's many different methods we can use to do this, but the one method you should be constantly doing when you model is incorporating the use of image planes. And remember from week one, we talked about view, image plane, and import image. You should always have these image planes available. And you wanna have an image plane for all the different little pieces of your model. So for instance, I'm gonna do a quick demo of how I would use that, but you're gonna want an image plane for your wheel, an image plane for your chain, an image plane for the base of the cannon, uh, the barrel itself of the cannon. All of these are gonna be extremely important when you go to model your final cannon. And to find reference is more than just simply looking um, and looking at a few of them, but to try to gather reference from different pieces. And you know, look at the detail. This is great attention to detail, and it could still be used for a video game. So you can see these are kind of wild views. We don't want to go too far into that. But you can see kind of the level of detail that this cannon brings to the picture. Let's look at some high quality wireframes here. Again, not a lot of faces, still relatively low poly, but the detail is there. So keep that in mind when you ask yourself, how far should I push a model? Now here's a smooth version that is obviously way highly detailed, but the subdivision level of one, or no divisions, basic divisions, is perfectly fine for our project. So I would keep it to about this level, and you can see this level still achieves some pretty amazing detail in the end. So keep that in mind as we go. So let's learn how to use image planes. If you have access to the actual object, obviously you may not have access to a cannon, but your best bet is to take a front, side, back, and top view of your picture. So here's a great cannon barrel that I'm going to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this image, and I'm gonna throw this image into, I have a demo folder, and this is gonna be one of my many image planes here. And you can see if I scroll down, there's even very simple drawn image planes. You can find blueprints. This, wow, that's an even a great one. I'll probably end up using this one. So this is an exact diagram that somebody already has built to give you a good idea of what this cannon looks like. And these are why I've chosen the models I've chosen for y'all. So how do we use them? Well, for this case, what we'll do with the cannon is go to our side view in Maya and do view, image plane, import image. Now, we'll navigate to our folder, which is demo, there we go. And we'll choose, let's choose the diagram, that was a lot nicer. And we'll scale it up. When I have it selected, I'll create a display layer and lock that layer down by going to R. If I just keep, I keep clicking, it will go to R. All of this is found in other videos. And I'm gonna name this reference image plane Canon barrel. I spelled that wrong, but as long as I model it right. Now, we need to look at this cannon and figure out what shapes make it up. I don't want to start down here and try to make it out of one piece. 
I think the best way to do this would be the following. I'm gonna start with the basic shape that I see right off the bat, and that's a cylinder. And I'm gonna rotate this cylinder 90 degrees, and I'm actually gonna turn my wireframe on, shade it on, and I'm gonna even put this on its own display layer and maybe make the, uh, the items yellow. Shading, x-ray, all of these are very good uh, methods, and yellow may not be the best for this demo, maybe like a blue, there we go. And now I can kind of see through it and watch my modeling process now. Take a look at this. Now for this process, I have a couple of different methods. I never wanna just scale my model up and down. I don't wanna do this, because if I do this, it seems like I'm doing the right thing, but I'm actually making, if you look very closely, a football shape. And I don't want that, I want it to be completely round so the cannonball can actually come out of it. So I'm gonna scale this up completely to fit a segment of my cannon. And at that point, I have a few options. So at this point, I think I'm going to do it this way. So I'm gonna stretch it from one side all the way down and it won't fit perfectly, but we'll get there. And this is the starting point. If you guys can see that, I have a little bit of room up here. Now I'm gonna add subdivisions. So I'm gonna use, not add divisions, but I'm gonna use my mesh tools, multi-cut, and I'm going to use my control key, and I'm going to add subdivisions kind of on the parts of the cannon in which I see um, major detail occurring. So I'm gonna go through and add a few pieces of subdivisions. Sometimes I just add them where the cannon maybe gets smaller. You can do this ahead of time or you can do it as I'm doing it right now. And now watch my method. I hit W, I go and I can start scaling those individual pieces up. And again, we're matching the line. So if I take X-ray off, you guys really will be able to see this. I'm matching the lines and I'm using the center from the top to the bottom, all the way down. So. Again, just nicely going through. It's gonna start tapering quite extreme here. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit more. There we go. And this is the method you all should be utilizing. Uh, at some point, you could even add an extrude to it. So we could do a mesh extrude, or pardon me, edit mesh, where is it at? Mesh extrude, I've only done this a thousand times. There we go. And I can pull that out and then I can take these faces and I can extrude them outward again. So I can do my extrude tool again and I could just pull them out and up. So even if it's slightly off, I can always grab these and kind of line them up. And I may extrude some more to get those basic shapes, but I'll go here and go to face and grab these faces and kind of extrude these out so let's see, sometimes the arrow, that one's the one. The whole time, if I'm looking at my perspective view, you can see kind of what I'm doing here. We had it looked like a couple lines here. And again, I'm just doing this for demo, so hopefully you guys can see how, when I say use reference, how do you see the reference if I don't provide my images? I can tell because I can tell when you do something like this. This is very obvious to me that you're you're actually modeling off of an image. Uh, it, I've been doing this a while now, and again, it comes with the territory. Uh, if somebody models something just out of visual memory, it's not as relevant. All right, so we have the majority of our Canon pieces. Now let's look at this piece. I know this is a sphere, so I'll get to that in a second, but you know, this one could be a sphere too. So let me rotate this. 90 degrees, and let's see if this sphere works here. If I were to scale this up and maybe flatten it slightly, could I get that shape pretty close? So that's, that's looking good for me. So I'm scaling it uniformly. And look, all the lines match up so I can weld it later. And when I get to a certain point, I can just delete the faces use half of it, and I'll weld these later. That's, I'll go ahead and weld these later, do not worry, and I'll get the basic shape there. Now at this point, I could do the same thing with this geometry. 
So I could take these and I could weld them outward like you see here. And I'm grabbing different rows of vertices. Make sure you grab them all, that's important. Sometimes I, you know, I double check, I triple check to make sure I'm grabbing everything, okay. And that's looking pretty good. It looks like at this point, maybe I'd want to extrude this out. So I'm gonna actually grab this from here. I'm gonna use the paint tool. This is a nice little tool. You can paint your selection. It's just on your toolbar. It's right here. And I'm going to extrude this outward and use your side view, you have it, you might as well use it. And I'm close. At this point I need another sphere, so I'm gonna delete those faces, grab another sphere, nudge it on over. I'm gonna rotate this again, because I like the top of my sphere is facing out. Do 90 degrees. Hopefully you guys can see the detail coming together. And when I get this all lined up, can then grab the faces, hit delete. Actually may have deleted too many faces there. There we go, just need to delete these. Maybe one more ring there, there we go. And now when I go to combine them and weld them later, I can do that and that's just mesh combine. So now I've created the basic shape to the cannon. And again, cannons have holes in the front so I wanna make sure that I go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do my edge loop tool and I'm gonna throw an edge ring, double click on an edge, narrow it down. I, I'm taking a guess. I should really look at this picture on the side here to do this. So if I had a front picture of a cannon, I could actually line it exactly where I want it. And go to face mode, get my selection tool and paint that. Perfect. Let's do an extrude and pull it in. All right, at this point, let's hide the uh, image plane so you guys can see what I'm doing. But at this point now, that's, that's pretty neat. Now I actually have what attempts to look like a cannon. And if I hit three or two on my keyboard, I actually have a pretty smooth cannon. Now I would do that after I combined my elements. So I would you know, delete the exterior faces, And then I would begin to mesh combine these elements together. So you can see where all of these could be welded at their respective parts. Now, some people ask me, okay, well then how do you do the, the wheel? Well, let's throw these all on a layer. If I'm doing the wheel, I approach it the same exact way. I have an image plane of a wheel and I do panels, or excuse me, view, and side view, image plane, import image. I navigate to my demo and I find a wheel that I found straight on, no perspective, and I lock down that layer. There we go. Double click and we'll do wheel, image plane, lock it down with R. And this time, I'm gonna, I can do a couple of things, but I'm gonna use the pipe function. And the pipe function is gonna actually be really, really helpful. 90 degrees, scale it up to the best of my ability. I could use some of the other tools. I'm going to, in this case, grab some of these edge loops. It's a big fat wheel, pretty crazy, huh? So let's see. I have to be careful here. I have to go up and then out. Use your image planes and be very aware of where everything's at. And then everything will kind of, you know, you want it to be orderly. That's looking pretty good. I actually dig that. Perfect. Now I have my wheel. Again, wheels aren't that big, so I can just scale it. If I had a picture of the side of the wheel, that would be helpful because I could then use that picture to line it up and go from there. I can also do the pipe tool to create the center here. 
90. Now at this point, I kind of realize everyone's gonna probably try to do a cannon. Do not just make my cannon. If you, know, if it's, if you don't wanna make my cannon or if you wanna make something else, that's fine. The overall concept here is what I'm trying to teach you guys. Uh, it's just trying to show you that there are other ways to create things. So keep that in mind as you go forward. And this is honestly the way that reference is seen uh, in your models when you're done. Again, it's not visual memory. So let's do another edge loop. Let's see if we can get an edge loop snuck in here. We can grab the face. There is easier ways to do this. I'm just in one of those modes where I wanna grab all the faces and I can pull out my extrusion. Maybe I can scale it in slightly. There we go. Want some detail there, don't we? Let's look at this shape again. It looks like there's nuts and bolts. So we could make one of those and then kind of stick them to the side. So how would we do that? Well, let's see. That looks like, that looks like a circle. We've done that actually before. So let's take our good old cylinder. Then I'm gonna make this super low poly. So not 88, maybe 12. And actually we could maybe even go lower. Go to top view. Delete the sides. Again, I'm being a little more thorough here so you guys understand the point of this. Grab the edge, extrude outward. You kind of remember this similar technique from the whole tutorial that we did. Scale upward, scale upward, grab these, scale down. There we go. And those looked like they had some thickness, so we'll start with the easy part. That looked like it was kind of pulled up. So edit mesh extrude, center that. Do another extrude just to get the illusion. And what else can we do? We can grab these, give it some thickness. Perfect. At this point, people have asked me, well, can I delete back edges? Well, yeah, if you had a bottom there, you could delete it. Uh, and now if I move this actually into X-ray mode, so let's do that. Rotate 90 degrees, negative 90 in this case, it's telling me. Shading X-ray mode. Easy peasy. You scale, you rotate, you hit Command D to duplicate. You don't copy and paste. And you create a really nice object. And for demo's sake, you know, I would honestly line these all up, but at a certain point, I'm just gonna grab them all Command G or edit group. Duplicate those, maybe flip them. Negative one, and drag them into place. Oops. There we go. And we need a few more in here. Actually, those need to go slightly higher. So last but not least, we'll grab these two, Command D, kind of move them into place, their respective homes. And now, grab them, Command G to group, 
modify center pivot, things we've learned, and I'm going to just place them right on top. Turn the wireframe on shaded on, and look at that, ladies and gentlemen. If we hide our wheel, we have the beginnings of a pretty detailed wheel. Now, we'd still have to go and add the spokes, but we could either extrude or we could just make one spoke and duplicate it, and then eventually, if we wanted to weld it, we could. But that gives you a good idea, hopefully, on how to attach both elements of your model, no matter what you're modeling, use this method, and um, that will get you the right, the right shape. So if some of you who are looking at your project one's going, what could I have done to make this better? Well, this is definitely a starting point. So you can see that starting to come together here. Uh, hopefully this helped and this gives you a good idea of what I mean by when I say visual reference and evidence of reference, image planes, levels of detail, things to that nature. Uh, and I really am looking forward to seeing you guys apply this to your own projects. Go ahead and uh, practice this and have a great one.